Good job, people. <laughs> this goes good with Todd's sermon, I think. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like we're right there in the church? This just puts me right in the congregation. Don't you feel like you're right in there in the church with them? <clears throat> I burped right at the end of the song. Isn't that sound cool? Too close, I can't tell it's your face. It just looks like hair. Wait, what does it look like? Just black. Because you're black. I can kind of see your map. I see your teeth. I just see it closed now. So there's your teeth again. Starting at verse 43. Oh, this guy's going to tell a sermon. Because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. We're right there with day them. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and Let ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. <coughs> Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me, would you? Pray with this guy, everyone. Lord, I am grateful that you call us together here to hear your word, to receive the strength you have for us, the guidance that you would give us. Open our minds and our hearts. Open our very lives mm -hmm. before you so that we might hear and we might respond. Oh, we'll go turn off the air then. We pray for this grace today in the precious Don't. name of Jesus. Amen. This has been a great year for weddings for me. I, I don't know about you. In some years, it seems like if I marry anybody, there are people that I've never met. People that they're just looking for somebody to do a wedding. No, we just got to turn off the air then. I get the feeling just anybody would do as long as they can sign the bond of the paper. However, this year has been a little different. So far this year, I've already performed three weddings, all for children of this congregation. People that have grown up here. I know their families. I know their parents. I know... Uh, there are grandparents in a lot of cases. It's been really hey, a wonderful time for that. And it makes a me. very different sense of celebration. Yeah, we're in your well, congregation. We're children who have grown up here as part of our scout program, things like that. Also, they uh, they were marrying wonderful girls, and it was nice to see them get started out. On top of that, maybe the, the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae uh, is that I got to go and witness the marriage vows for my nephew, uh, who got married in a church where I was a student pastor. Uh, for a couple of years, and so I got to witness that and enjoy that. And a wonderful young woman, both of them dedicated and committed both to each other and to Christ. And it's wonderful wow. to see that kind of a relationship get started. It fills you full of hope as you see those young lives united That's together. So uh, and then, it's funny, at the, uh, at the uh, like service just before this one, like Marilyn Miller gave thanks for the fact that she'd been married for 37 years. Uh, which I thought was pretty good. And I said, gee, Jill and I, we've been married for 37 years. And she went, 30, 38, 35, um, and then, I, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Ah. Sorry, but it's been a while, I'll tell you that. You know? <laughs> 
you guys are gas. It doesn't take much, you know, if you have your eyes open to recognize that marriages lasting for 37 years are getting kind of rare. In fact, it's, it's almost rare to see marriages last for five years sometimes. Uh, the marriages seem to, to go over and be gone, you know, before you even know it. That maybe that many people are getting married because they're the pitter, little pitter-patter of their heart. And what they don't realize is your heart can't pitter-patter that fast for too long before you expire. You know, and your marriage has got to be built on something a little bit more than, than your fast-beating heart. Uh, if you're going to have a marriage that lasts, it's going to have to be a marriage based on... Hallelujah, no! Because that's what love is really about. Any, anybody that's been married for, you know, more than a couple of years can tell you that marriage has its up and downs. Hallelujah! Uh, ups and downs are not... Uh, a day or two, sometimes a, a down or an up can last for a year or two, you know, and you just persevere through those more difficult times, knowing that you'll come out the other end, and, you know, the love that you kind of feel inside isn't always what holds that marriage together, in fact, during those tough times, it's always the commitment that you've made to one another that allows a marriage to last through those really difficult Sir, don't times. be a brat yet. And that's the reason why marriage is used as an so he's just doing it because we're in the middle of church. It's not based on how we feel about each other, though we will hope that we do love one another and that that's a part of who we are. What really holds us start come back to church is our commitment, our commitment to one another. I can't come in there. I'm filming church. Because God puts us in this fellowship of believers in a place where we will be able to grow into maturity, a place where we will become the kind of disciples who really display. God's love, not just to people they like who are nice to them, but God's love to people who are just mean to them sometimes. If you can't figure it out. God's love, God's love reaches out to all. And that happens only as we Whatever you can't children, figure out must be really complicated. And it's apparent to me that some Christians are making a serious mistake as they pick out churches. Because more often than not these days, when you look at people, they're they're picking out a church where they think they'll get the best services. You know what I mean? They go church shopping the same way somebody might go shopping for a dress. And they find one they think they like, they pull it off the rack, they take it on back and try it on. It doesn't fit right. Or maybe when they get it on, they realize the colors aren't exactly what they were hoping for. Or it cuts them in the wrong place. And so they just take it back, put it back on the rack, and try another one. And they'll try on dresses until they, they get one that they actually really like. And people that do that with church. They go in, they might be looking for some particular kind of service. Maybe they're looking for an inspiring speaker who will speak with great power yeah. and in much excitement. Those guys silly. Let me watch the sermon here. Oh, great music program, or if they have kids, a lot of times they're looking for a wonderful education program for the kids, or maybe a nice youth group or something like that. But they're looking for what they can get. And that's the problem. They have a directional problem. They're looking for what they are going to get out of church. When church is all about a place where we learn how to... Hey, if you're not going to church, you got to let, let me at least film it. real maturity takes place, not in getting... Oh, of course, when we're young, we need to be taught, we need to be raised, we need to be loved. Sure. Are you learning how to be young, a preacher? Well, we don't want to stay... You better be learning young. how to be a pastor is the reason you're doing this. 